Hello, hi, yes, I Hello. hear you. Hello, hi. Yeah, okay. I'm glad we can make it at time. I received your email, I said, oh, maybe I read something wrong, but it's good that we kept it at this time. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Hello, everyone. Let's begin our today's seminar. My name is Hao Ranji from Tianjin University of China. It's really my honor to host this seminar. And uh, let's welcome our speaker, Philip. And uh, the topic of our today's seminar is the economic potential of great defection of energy consumer households in Germany. And uh, first, let me introduce our speaker. Philip Sabadini is an ASEAN research associate and a doctoral student. Its current research involves energy, autarky, and the prosumers living the grid. He is also involved in a number of projects considering the regulation of storage systems and the mobility, such as vehicle to grid, and the more recently, gamification and serious games applied in the context of the simple transition. And uh, next, let's become our today's seminar. Stage. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Hauran. Thanks for organizing and thanks for the invitation. Yeah, I hope we have a, a nice next 60 minutes. And uh, yeah, please, uh, would be nice to have participation, questions, and suggestions at the end. So I'll just share my screen. Yeah. Um, can you see it? Yeah, we can see. Now it's on presentation mode. Yes, perfect. So as you already mentioned, I'm going to present this paper that was published uh, in Advanced Applied Energy. So the paper is about the economic potential of grid defection of energy consumer households in Germany. Um, we can explain all these concepts in a, a bit about the title and the next slides, but we are basically approaching how people will leave the grid, how they can be independently uh, from the grid, not connected to the grid, or sometimes connected, but generating their own electricity and having uh, their own sustainable source of electricity as well. So this agenda will basically make this introduction, showing you the background and motivation about the topic. Then I'm going to say about, yeah, the methods that we use, the results that we found, and then we can make a, a conclusion about that. And then I expect some questions from you if you have any. So when we're talking about, let me take this out of here. Yeah, when we're talking about energy autarky or leaving the grid or leaving off the grid, I think that's, that's a very common picture that people just imagine an island or they can imagine a um, discovery channel show that shows people around Alaska living to completely off the grid and isolated and generating their own power sources, getting their own food and everything. Or even if you just escape from the police and yeah, and they, they show they were going to show you that you're living off the grid. So what what we do here is a bit different from these these topics. Uh, we're not going to analyze people that are living completely isolated, although these solutions can happen. And we are just talking about people who are living in the city and have the desire to live in a more sustainable way, producing their own electricity. So the, the question that I make is, do we know people like this or do we know situations where people would like to produce or generate 100% of their electricity? Is this something worthy of study? That's something that we're going to answer on the next slides. So we have to think about the big contest. So let's take a step back and look about the bigger picture. Uh, photovoltaics, home of solar, home scale solar photovoltaics have becoming increasingly affordable and popular in the past 
20 years. Uh, they were expensive and an industrial solution in the beginning, and now everybody can basically have it in their, in their homes. Besides that, there was a time and there is still a time where government would pay you to have this, this sort of technology. So this is something that it's not news anymore. It's not a novelty. And people are already used it to have, to see, to meet with their neighbors and see them with solar photovoltaics. So people are already used it to producing some sort or some part of their electricity consumption daily. And after the government subsidy, subsidies, and we see the cost of PVs, the cost of the, 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 the plates and also the inverters, everything that was involved to PVs, the cost has fallen dramatically on the last 20 years. And it's become really, really affordable. And then we also saw other critical materials and components of, of this, this feature also fall. Uh, we are seeing that we still have a barrier in terms of you cannot generate 100% of your electricity just with solar photovoltaic. You will need some sort of storage, especially during the night or during the winter or cloudy days. So you also need the other couple, the other pair of this of the system, which is the battery, the energy storage battery. And the battery is still expensive, but it's not as expensive was in the past. And we expect that the battery with the passing of the years are also increasing the, the, the cost, decreasing the costs. So in terms of the PV and everything that is involved in there, we see the significant price decreases and we see that people want to adopt that. This is becoming more common and more common. At the same time, if you take an analysis of the past 20 years, the grid electricity prices are rising, especially if you take the case of Germany and the need of Texas to finance this energy transition, this makes the prices in Germany one of the most expensive in Europe and also in the world. So in one hand, you have people not very happy with the price that they're paying with the electricity that they're getting from the grid, from their utility provider. And on the other hand, people are seeing that they can generate part of their electricity, or if they couple that system with some battery, they can generate a larger part or maybe 100% of that. So that has sparkled something about off living grid, people living inside the region, not in very remote regions, people living inside the cities and taking back degenerated. So I don't want to be connected anymore. I want it to be my, on my own because the electricity that I generate here is cheaper than the one that I, I could bring it from the grid. And that is the sentiment that people have. Uh, besides that, if you analyze what these types of benefits that can have when you start producing your, your own electricity, you see that there is a general benefit as well for the environment and for the grid. For example, if you generate your electricity locally, you're going to decrease the transportation distance of energy resources and transmission costs will decrease. You can increase the local added value of your chain in terms of creating local jobs or increasing tourism, but also straining the regional identity of something. Uh, imagine that people are a bit resistant in some regions that they do not want the installation of wind farms because the regional identity of some mountains or some Alps uh, that will be erased and people are resistant on that. It's about the not in my backyard. Um, I study that people do, that people really support the transition and people really support introduction of renewable energy as long as they are not bothered uh, with that. So you see that even, even when we're talking about renewable people, people, some people are resistant on that. So we have many benefits at that. So just especially increasing um, the insurance against future energy prices. You never know how expensive we can get. And if you generate your own, you can have a benefit on that. Of course, that when we are talking about regional alter key, energy alter key, living off the grid, off grid alter key, uh, all those terms are just related to renewable energy, 
So I'm not talking about someone who just buys a diesel generator and is living off the grid in terms of that. So it's the, this, this, this pair with renewable energy and generating your own energy and how people can do that. Uh, the literature brings uh, many reasons why the customers and the consumers are, are pushed to accept or to open their eyes in terms of energy alterkey. So we can call the three biggest one would be the demand for cleaner energy. I know that if I produce in my own PV, that's renewable and I'm getting yeah, renewable energy without using the transmission grid and everything. I also want the pursuit of a better economics. My energy is too expensive. I can get a cheaper one and, and it's even cleaner. And of course, the frustration with the companies that operate. So great frustration or utility and some regulatory changes can also push people to defect from the grid. Especially, I, I, I don't feel I, I don't feel valuable as a customer with my energy provider. That's one of the big complaints. They also can, of course, avoid high electricity price. Desire, this is a more abstract side, but the desire for self-sufficiency and the simply wanting, yeah, taking some actions that lead to a more sustainable life. Something that we also see not just with energy, but just but with other types of sources as well. People who have a garden or a city garden and they want to cultivate their own organic farm, they want to have their own food. So this is a more abstract, but this is something that fulfills people's desire in terms of self-sufficiency and also a more sustainable life. Not reasons that we're going to study or we can measure, but keep in mind that is very important as well. Uh, in terms of the, the literature background of studying this subject, we already have some of the studies on that. So the results show that generally 100% off-grid system is typically asymptotic. So increasingly higher capacity of the PV and battery system is required in order to achieve full independency. What we normally know, of course, is that during the winter, you do not have you do not have the availability of the, of the power. The power availability is lower, of course, because of solar irradiation, and you need a larger and larger system to hold that. And this larger system is not going to be used during the summer because then the power availability is much larger and your energy is going basically to be wasted. So we put it here as exceed energy. So also other authors show as well that the cost of PV battery, the off-grid PV battery system is relatively higher than staying connected. So staying connected would be more advantageous. And that 100% would be very hard to achieve. And if we compromise and go to a lower reliability and we go for a lower cost, then we can get a nice, nice price and nice levels of economically, yeah, economically speaking. Uh, with a reliability level of one up to 80%. So not 100% of electricity will be generated, but 80%. So there is a limited amount for solar storage systems to be economically feasible to substitute the grid services. And, but at the same time, a study shows that with very low electric, electricity demand, uh, the customers would have the strong incentive to defect from the grid. And as well that we can expect that this profile of customers would be from one to 7% of households, which is a number that you cannot neglect. So there is a considerable amount of people who do not have a higher demand of electricity and have these strong incentives to defect from the grid and they're important to be studied. There, are, however, not everything is good in terms of leaving the grid because there is what we call the death spiral, especially with the utility services. That is very simple to be, to be explained in terms of the, of the psychology of the group. So we have basically 
everybody is together and everybody's holding economically the grid together. Everybody's paying, everybody's involved, everybody's connected. Once I am a prosumer or, or I'm a producer and a consumer of my own electricity, mainly because I have a PV or a battery or have other types of source, and I see that I can do it that by my own, I will leave the grid. I will, when I will leave the grid, the network cost of the grid will be distributed over fewer and fewer customers. And thus the individual cost that was lower when more people was involved is going to get higher when less, when fewer people are involved, which means that this gives an extra um, addition to people to leave the grid because with something that was expensive is getting more and more expensive. So that's a spiral. People leave the grid, the cost gets higher because there are fewer people to, to share these costs. The people that are there decided to leave, then the cost are, gets even higher because people got there, has to divide those costs by fewer people and people leave and basically we get the death spiral of the utility services. This can of course be not very good. This, can in, this will induce high costs by a significant shift in the energy system. And also this can lead to eventual social disruptions due to regional or local winner, winners and losers. Of course, energy supply will be, will be threatened. And of course, if we're talking about energy supply, there will be consequences for food and feed production as well. So this is something that is, is, is worth mentioning. So when we talk about Germany, we can say why we conducted this study in Germany. So Germany is the, lead, is the world leader in installed solar power per, cap, per capita. So we already had the basis, we already laid the foundation of our basis here in Germany. We have a considerable amount of solar power. Uh, residential, residential sector is responsible for a large part of the solar power installed around 15%. And in the recent years, in the last five years, for so to say, around 50% of the installed solar PV system are already being installed with batteries. So we already have what we need to start aspiring for a 100% of, of uh, electricity. Besides that, the levelized cost of energy of those systems could range from 3.5 to 7 cents per kilowatt hour, uh, while the cost of the electricity from the grid is 30 cents per kilowatt hour. So we have a, a big difference between what I could get with my own system and what I have to pay with the system uh, with the costs that are on the grid now. So I, I would say those, those are the basically the economic side that incentivize people about thinking, thinking on their own energy system. So yes, I, I hope I, I clarify this scenario for you and yeah, justify where we're going to analyze both this and both the scenarios in Germany. So this topic seems not fully explored yet. The economic valuation of such autarky system is still unclear in Germany. And we can also make move some pieces and look for something that was not studied before. So with this mentioned gaps, this work extends the knowledge and financial analysis of the economic viability of off-grid houses in Germany. That's our goal. That's our that's the gap that our work uh, fills. So in terms of method, what did we do to to cover that? So we restricted, restricted our analysis to family owner occupied homes because residents of these types of, of houses, they have the higher energy consumption. And with a higher energy consumption, the gap between what you pay from the grid and what you can pay from your own electricity is higher. Thus, that's an incentive. And also the income is also bigger for this family owner occupied houses. Well, of course, we didn't analyze apartments because they do not have uh, space for the installation. And in this way, we have to think that those people also own the house that they are living because such an investment would not be done by them. 
and it would also not be done by the landlord because none of them would benefit from the investments that they are doing. We use it the German city of Munich for a case study. The use case of, Germ of Munich here in Germany is because the South has a very sunny weather. So this is the best case scenario in terms of if this doesn't work in Munich, this would not work in the rest of Germany because the solar radiation is not strong as in the South. And we use the standard load profiles to get the household electricity consumption at an hourly resolution for a year. We studied the five types of households family. So the households family with two adults, two adults and one children, one child, two and three child children. And of course, the, the most uncommon one would be two adults with two, two, two children and two senior people living there. Of course, that we have other types of houses here, and maybe it would be unfair to say that there is not a household in Germany that has more than six people living. But these, this configuration of households uh, definitely holds 90% of, of the households in Germany. So is it strong enough so we can make assumptions based on that? Then we also made some uh, assumptions on the terms of, of the load profile and how people spend their time with the electricity. So the adults are assuming to work full time. So they leave the house and they come back at the end of the day. The children also leave the house to go to school and then go back to the house. And the seniors, of course, are not stuck in the house. They're not uh, in jail in the house but they spend most of their time in the house because they already retired, for example. And they leave the house occasionally, but not for long hours, such as a reason for work. Uh, we assumed also that we, we would have the space and the investment. So neither of that would be a barrier, especially because the investment cost will be uh, high. We got the generation profile from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. We also get, according to the literature, the uh, orientation and the system loss, azimuth and slope angles were optimized. We got the time of the lifetime of the lifetime of the battery you assume it to be 10 years. And we are taking these analysis for 30 years. So we're going to have three batteries, two batteries uh, replacement. For minimal degradation following other technical papers, we uh, locked the state of charge the battery from 15 to 85%. And of course, as I mentioned, two replacements of the battery. This replacement of the battery wouldn't be 100%, but it would be estimated at 60% of the original price from the original investment that would made in the beginning. 30 years would seem a very good time between how much time does the system hold together? And also how much time people intend to finance a house in Germany. So if they're buying a house around their 30s, then they can install a system that will last 30 years. In 30 years, the system will have to be fully replaced, but in 30 years also the house is going to be paid. So other types of decision and 30 years seems a nice horizon to, to plan. Um, it's assuming that so what, what we do we in terms of the battery. So when we start the day, and let's suppose we're starting the day at six and the sun is shining. So we have a power output from the PV. What we're going to do with this power output first, it's meet uh, the household's demand. So the power generate will meet the household demand. Uh, if there is a surplus, if I'm not using, if the household is not using, completely using this power output, then I'm going to charge the battery. And that is going to get. In the end, if I'm already, if the, my power generation, let's suppose at 10 p.m., 10, 10 a.m., if I'm using the power output for the house and there is a surplus, and if this surplus is being directed to the battery, and the battery is already fully charged, then this surplus is going to be directed to the grid and it's going to be sold in, in as, a, as we put, and I'm going to explain later, 
as a feed-in tariff. Then in the end, during the night, when they get home and let's suppose there is no power output, there is no, yeah, no PV generation, then all, the, all these requirements from the night and from the evening would be meeting from the battery. So exclusively from the battery. What we do, what we did here, that is a novelty in terms of the other uh, studies is that we are virtually closed. So there is no electricity in port from the grid, but I'm still holding the connection to the grid. So I can benefit from the feeding tariffs when I'm not using this exceed energy. And by, you, and by doing that, of course, I'm having a, a new type of cash flow that I wouldn't have in other types of studies. So for the financial calculations, we use the NPV model. The NPV model, of course, is made of the investment cost that I'm going to show you later, and the two types of cash flows. So one type of cash flow is going to be the revenue from the electricity fed into the grid. Again, if the if I'm having some power that I'm not that I'm already using for the power for the house demand, and if the battery is already fully charged, I'm going to direct this excess energy to the grid, and this is going to be sold for a feeding tariff that I'm going to explain. And the other types of cash flow would be the difference between my levelized cost of energy and the cost of energy that would I have from the grid. Let's suppose here that the grid price is 30 cents per kilowatt and I'm generating my own electricity at five, per kilo, five cents per kilowatt. So this 25, cent, 25 cents of difference, I included that as a cash flow as well. So two types of, two types of cash flow. So those are the, param the parameters that we used on the studies, though the PV, battery, inverter costs, the operational costs, uh, installation and construction costs, the discount rate, the project lifetime, and the feeding tariff around nine cents per kilowatt hour that Germany pays if you put your excess energy into the grid. So in terms of results, those are the necessary sizes of PV in blue and the battery in orange. So as you see, 91 kilowatt and 19 kilowatt hour of battery is a really large number, especially for larger, for larger houses. What we see here is that this demand is not linear. So most of the load profile from the house that you think that is linear is not. For instance, a house that has two adults and a house that has four adults, this, this, this relation is not linear. So the house with four adults would not consume twice the electricity. <coughs> this is due because some parts of the house activities are made in group. So cooking, for example, you take advantage to cook, cooking for everybody, so you're not going to cook four times differently, or watching some TV, or interacting, or even surfing on the internet. This can be done in group, and is not going to need four type four TVs for four people watching, for example. And also in terms of investments that are also large numbers, these are the initial investments that we would need for the systems of the sizes that I showed you. So around, I don't know, 20% of the battery investment of the investment is going to, it comes from the battery and the other comes from the PV investment. So we would, we need, of course, a larger size of PV than, than the batteries. That is mainly because during the winter time, we wouldn't need a larger, larger system to get the amount of radiation that during summer we wouldn't need it. So if we compare the size and the investments with the current scenario in Germany, we see a great discrepancy with the current profile of adopted PVs and batteries. In Germany, most of the PV system adopters, uh, they go for a relatively smaller battery uh, with a relatively smaller capacity of PV as well. Typically, 
in a study, they show that a 10 kilowatt PV is generally combined with a seven kilowatt hour battery and a five kilowatt PV is combined with a five kilowatt, watt, kilowatt hour battery. So here we, we exceeded much, much more the capacity of the, of the regular household in Germany. What we also saw that is important is that the distribution of the peak loads is more relevant it, and it's the bottleneck of the system. What I mean is, if you see the difference between the house with two adults and the two adults with one child, the, you're going to see that the one with more residents has a lower capacity installed. That is because it really depends on how much electricity you're using during a specific hour. Sometimes a demand side management is more important than the installed capacity and would help much more the profitability of the system than just increasing the PV capacity. And now I'm going to talk about the impact of the feeding tariff because this is the tariff, the tariff that we get when we are um, putting the exceed energy into the grid. So, Every system, every PV system up to the size of 100 kilowatt receives a feeding tariff here in Germany. This feeding tariff is 8.9 cents per kilowatt, around 9 cents per kilowatt hour. However, the consumers who pay, who have a PV system that is larger than 10 kilowatt, which is our case, they have to pay a portion of the EEG umlage, the surcharge, which is around 40% of the self-consumed energy. And what, what I want to mean is that the EEG surcharge, this amounts to around seven cents. And if I have to pay 40% of that, that means that every kilowatt hour that I self consume, uh, it's gonna cost around th three cents more. So this means that my cash flow will be done, it's going to be 26, 26 cents per kilowatt hour instead of 29 cents per kilowatt hour minus my levelized cost of energy. So if your system is not larger than kilowatt, than 10 kilowatt, then you don't need it. But with larger system, which is all the cases for us, then you're going to pay the surcharge. So I already showed you the size of the systems. I already so showed you the necessary investments. And this is the financial result. So after 30 years, none of these five households have a positive value by installing the PV and the battery and getting their 100% electricity. So we have to think about what, what is wrong on this model and how we could fix it in terms of how we can turn this negative from for positive values. So, this is the yearly revenue that I'm that I'm using in my models. So one of the revenues comes from the self-generation. My cost, the cost from electricity that I get from the grid minus the cost of my electricity. Uh, the other source of revenue comes from the feeding tariff. So the electricity that I'm not using and I'm sending to the grid. So as you can see, there is a lot of potential here because here I'm using my maximum. I cannot start using more electricity just to get cheaper, but I can start finding other types of revenue to my feeding tariff payment and replace this nine cents. If you think that nine cents is not very high from the, uh, from the electricity and given that the electricity price is around 30 cents, if I replace one from another, then my, my, my revenue, my cash flow will be much more robust. So I'm bringing this scenario to compare. This is the grid difference. In blue, we have the grid difference. This means that this is how much I'm profiting by replacing the electricity that I get from the grid and getting my own and cheaper electricity from my system. On the orange one, it's the feeding tariff. So the electricity that I do not use because my battery is already charged and my house demand is, is met. And I'm getting this electricity, this exceed the curtailed electricity. 
And the gray one is my proposal here in the paper that I'm selling this to a third party by a, using a peer-to-peer -peer trading platform by type of household. So instead of getting this electricity and selling to the grid using nine cents, I'm going to sell this to my neighbor. I'm going to sell this to the industry in my neighborhood or to someone in other city who wants to buy my electricity from me because it's you no, know, it's from a PV, from renewable, and with a nice price. So when we do this, then I'm going to get from this negative scenario that I showed you before to a very positive scenario. So the key for this sensitive analysis that I want to show you is that we already have the electricity and we are basically wasting this electricity using a very, feed, very low feeding tariff. But when we get this feeding tariff and we replace it for selling this electricity in the market, and a peer-to-peer -peer platform, for example, then all of my results become extremely positive and my, my investments return are really good. In terms of levelized cost of energy, I just wanted to show you here that lignite and coal-fired power plants, they have a higher levelized cost of energy. Then wind turbines and biogas power plants, they also have a higher levelized cost of energy than the cost of energy from the systems that I am analyzing. In, 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 short, in a short sentence, I can, get a, I can generate cheaper electricity using my PV and battery system in my home than the lignite coal-fired coal power plants or even with renewables in terms of wind turbines and biogas power plants. And of course, that I'm showing you this, and this is the, the revenue. And this revenue is not going to just get from my side. This revenue should go and should be divided between a peer-to-peer -peer platform. We can also go for a lower uh, price of energy to become more attractive. So in the paper, I didn't put no other costs. So no other costs or investment in terms of maintenance of a peer-to-peer platform was considered, which is, I also assume, it's really unlikely to happen in the reality. But given the, the size and the robustness of the values, we can conclude that the business model is still valuable and viable, even if you have to share the revenue. So predicting the future of the utility business model is challenging, but the literature already pointed that distributed renewable energy, especially solar PV coupled with energy storage, will change the utility business model. So the basis of that are already laid and we show how profitable it is. So we just need company to start exploring that. But I also got curious and I asked myself, what would happen if we stayed with the feeding tariff? Forget about the P2P platform, just stay with the P2P We'll just let's stay with the feeding tariff and let's analyze what would happen in a scenario where I just lower my expectations. As the literature mentioned, 100% of electricity is really hard. Actually, 100% of everything is really hard. And when we lower our bar and we go for a more flexible uh, reliability in terms of how much electricity I want to get, then I also can get nicer results. So the blue bar here shows the original results, the negative results that I showed you what's going to happen when I go to 100% of alterkey. But if I go to 99%, and if I just reduce 1% of my hours dependency on electricity, then I can reduce my losses by 50%. And if I go for 95% or 90%, then we, I also start seeing some profitability on the system. So as the literature mentioned, we could also go for a lower level of energy alter key where we could find positive results. Then I asked it myself, what is the highest level of alter key that I could get while we still maintaining a zero or a very small profit in terms of the system? So I'm not aiming the profit here, but I'm aiming the maximum hours that I can have with my houses. So 
and I also did that. So I wanna point many results here. So in terms of the levelized cost of energy, all of them got a really nice levelized cost of energy, lower than the traditional and renewable sources that we saw. And we could get a dependency that comes from 65 until 94% of the hours. So I can get 75% of my hours met with my system and is still profitable. Of course, this profitability here is almost no, but there are many other reasons that people go for alter key system. And I'm just excluding the economic reason here. So people can still have a no profitability and keep their, and keep their independency from the grid. So on average, a household can provide 60 to 80% of its own electricity with positive, but almost no financial re returns. Uh, although the houses do not face negative results, we can notice that the NPV is closer to zero here. And in a real life situation without abstract reasons, no one would be willing to invest a large amount of money in order to have zero return after 30 years. So to conclude, my time is, is, is coming to an end. Uh, we, I have showed you the, and analyzed the economic viability of, of grid households in Germany. We find that for all households studied, the levelized cost of energy is lower than the German national electricity price, much, much lower. Uh, when we first analyzed the profitability of the project, no project showed a positive PV initially. And we also started a sensitive analysis with possible business solutions to improve this NPV. The first option that we analyzed was to use another source of revenue for our curtailed electricity. So instead of say, sending, selling it to the grid as a feeding tariff, we just use it as a a peer-to-peer -peer platform. In this situation, for all types of households, the NPV values inverted from negative to significantly higher figures. And then we also uh, made another sensitivity analysis to consider lower levels of energy alter key in a more flexible way. So we raised the 100% and we went from 99, 95, and 90%. The outcomes reveals, of course, a remarkable decrease in the investments and a very improvement in terms of the NPV. But however, there is still no significant profit in the system. All of the results are negative. And the final step, we made a sensitive analysis where we showed that a household could provide from 60 to 80% of its own electricity without losing money, but without a very robust NPV return. So to conclude, the results show that this study that leaving the grid is not yet a feasible option in Germany. The beneficial scenario would be to keep the connection to the grid and not build a very large system. So keeping the connection and minimize your, your electricity imported from the grid by getting a five to five system, for example. In the case of, a, of, of an autark system, the best solution is to find that we found to revert to negatives is to found a bi-directional grid market who prosumers are connected to customers and that you can use your Cotela energy not with feeding tariff, but with the market price. So what we do in terms of that is that we can incentivize the policies, uh, energy policies in the country to focus specifically on helping the small scale prosumer contacts, of course, people who are willing to buy their electricity for a lower price, but knowing that this electricity comes from renewables, connecting exactly this platform between prosumers and consumers. That's it. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I hope I could make it in time. And I'm open for questions if you have any. Okay, thank you for your excellent report. And thank you for your listening. I think it is really an interesting research.
And by firstly utilizing the PV systems from the households, it provides a promising way to lean off the grid. I think it is very interesting. And the next, we will spend some minutes uh, on the questions. And uh, if you have any questions, you can read, you can ask it. Okay, any questions? If you have any questions, you can comment it and uh, directly ask or put the questions into the dialogue box. Yes, I, I think you also have uh, my email or contact. So if you have a other type of question that you prefer to discuss, yeah, bilaterally, you can also email, contact me, give your suggestions. I would be very happy to hear from you. Yeah, and I have a small question, and uh, I want to know how to how to utilize the peer to peer energy trading to make the system financial feasibility to improve the system financial feasibility. That's that's a, a, a very good question. We st we already have some startups working in Europe in terms of energy uh, energy cloud storage, or even a peer to peer as well. I remember a Dutch company that's working in Netherlands with that, connecting exactly peer to peers. I, I would say that the technical part is it's a bit hard for me to explain, but we we can we must adapt our system to have this bi-directional flow. So currently we have a system that supports just the flow from the power plants to your house, but does not support great amount of energy from your house to the inver to inverse inverse side. So the, the, this change would be needed as well. And the others, I think they're, they're going to grow as the, the internet of things and the smart grid grows, grows as well. But as soon as, as we already have startups exploring this, I would say that is already profitable and is already doable these days. As I mentioned, we expect this, the people to in a very positive scenario, we expect 7% of households to defect. That's, that's a considerable, but not extremely large number. So uh, I think you already have business model profitable for exploration. Yeah, I see, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, okay. anyone has any questions? Okay, I have say, a question from the Libby platform, and it asks how to utilize, how to address the voltage violation by in the Germany called by the PV integration. Could you repeat the question, please? Yeah, yeah. How to address the voltage violation? How how to the, How to address the voltage violation called by the PV integration in Germany? I'm sorry, I did I didn't understand my I think my internet connection is not good. Could you yeah. write or even or even yeah repeat? Yeah, with the high penetration of the PV systems, there may be a voltage violation or a high voltage called by the PV fluctuation. And uh, how to address this problem in the Germany? And okay. there is a, yeah. Yes, yes, that's that's a great question. That. I think one of the, the reviewers made this question for us. It was really interesting. What we said that this variation is already happening with, with renewable energy, but what, what we did here is that we did not invent the wheel in terms of the flow of this variation of the voltage. So it is, as, as I mentioned to you, from the whole installed capacity of PV in Germany, 15% is on the hands of households which means that we have 15% of the energy outputs being directed to the grid because uh, now with home office it's different, but in normal terms, no one is at home at 3 p.m. when it's at peak production. So at 3 p.m. we have all the households PV in Germany directly in their flows outside to the grid to receive PV. 
So this is already happening and this is, would not be a problem or a solution that we are offering. This uh, other, other flow of energy into the inverse, inverse site is already happening and we would just uh, change the source revenue. So instead of putting this energy that is already going on the other direction, with feeding tariff, we're just using that as a peer-to-peer -peer platform. So yeah, no, no, no problem brought or solved by us. Okay, thank you for the answer. Yeah, I see. Yeah, there is a new question in the dialogue box. Okay, the building, okay. yeah. yeah, you you can see from the dialogue box. Yes, so do the buildings in Germany already have the ability to perform peer-to-peer -peer trading, energy trading? How much investment would be needed to enable buildings to perform peer-to-peer -peer energy trading? Thanks. So uh, thanks for your question. That's a really interesting one. I did not explore that much in, in our paper. I already know that we have in Germany, so I'm using Europe as, as, a, as an example because everything is integrated here. So I would say that what happened in, in Netherlands also happened in Germany. So in Germany, we already have cloud, cloud energy storage solutions. So we already have these types of flow. So it's basically, you can have a battery itself, but it's not yours. You just rent one, and then you can use this battery to store your energy and bring it when you want. But this is already happening in, in the Netherlands. So I would say the ability to perform peer-to-peer -peer energy trading, we already have this in terms of the infrastructure and everything, but we need new actors. We need more, maybe the more advances of technology, more investments, and more people interested on that. Okay, okay thank you. Yeah. And any other questions? Okay, if there are no questions that come to the end of our seminar, and thank you again for your speaking. I think it is an excellent work. Yeah, uh, thank welcome. You all. It's a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, thank you all for your listening. And uh, I think, I hope we can find it very useful and energy vision, and we can continue to pay attention to our energy vision seminar. And uh, thank you all, and uh, see you again. Thank you. If you have any other questions, we can email to the Felipe and for more discussion. Okay, thank you, thank you all. Okay, bye. Thank you, bye-bye. And bye-bye.